is Ian Randall. I've just returned from the 2018 World Rowing Sports Medicine Science and Coaches Conference, which was held in Berlin. The talks in the main auditorium were recorded and are available via the FISA's website. Um, some of the talks in the smaller rooms were not, and I've been asked if I could give a read through of the presentation I made on the Randall Foil. Good morning. My name is Ian Randall, the developer of the Randall Foil. My professional background is in art education. However, I'm here at the conference to share with you a very simple discovery in blade design. The design discovery offers immediate and compelling performance advantages and future design opportunities. And I have felt an excited sense of obligation to share this design with others. I think I've found something. That I'm with you this morning is only because of the goodwill and generosity of so many in our sport. And my design is already seeing growing adoption whilst we're standing the increasing scrutiny from the rowing community. I have moved from hypothesis to proof of concept, prototype, commercial product, certification, adoption, and now I'm moving towards acceptance, perhaps the biggest hurdle. Now design changes in rowing are slow when compared to other sports because they're considered, they're scientific and they're thorough. FISA carefully deliberated over my design and determined that it does conform to all current laws governing blade design. I wish to thank the FISA executive for the time they spent in considering my application and for ruling positively in the design's favour. I'd like to share my discovery with you, how the decision was made to invest in the design and the data set that provided the green light. The design I'm presenting involves placing a hydrofoil on the top edge of a rowing blade a hydrofoil is a lifting surface that operates in water. The hydrofoil is long and flat and sits contrary to the natural directional flow of water, creating resistance which translates into lift. The Randall foil deflects the water being forced vertically on the blade during the rowing stroke, resulting in the restriction of oar depth. The design concept was to eliminate contact between the water and the oar shaft, so that only the blade was in the water during the rowing stroke. I acknowledge that this design comes at the end of an exhaustive and expensive and seemingly fruitless experimentation with blade design. Our energy to look into this area has been totally spent. Yet there is a feeling that we're missing something, that there is potential to be utilised in the water that surrounds the oar during the stroke and that we have simply come to accept the consequential aspects of the current cleaver blade, the catch slip, the breaking splash, and the potential of this surrounding water continues to elude us. Both Braca Sport and Croker Oars have trialled what seems to be a similar design to mine. These designs involve extending the top edge of the blade in a wave formation in an attempt to capture the water flowing over the top of the blade. The aim of these designs was to create more hold or grip on the water during the stroke. And you will notice that the current Concept 2s seem to have the remnants of such a design element. When I met with Darren Croker two years ago, when I made the discovery, he showed me their design experiment, which was in conjunction with Sydney University Science and Mathematics Department. It too was a waveform and was abandoned in the prototype phase as rowers were not able to extract the blade cleanly from the water at the finish. These wave formation designs were not effective, as the blade was buried at the catch, and once submerged, it could not be released. I would like to thank Darren Croker for being so supportive of my design project and for sharing with me his own journey with experimental designs. In contrast, the Randall design does not employ a wave formation, but a distinct flat, opposing surface which is set against the flow of water. The Randall foil creates lift without the rower being able to bury the shaft through the water whilst employing a technical and powerful horizontal stroke. Unlike Braca Sport and Croker Oars, the primary design concept was not to create more hold on the water 
instead to eliminate all contact between the water and the ore shaft. Trials were conducted into the size of the Randall foil to determine the optimal functioning design for both sculling and sweep ores. I scaled up the design proportionally for the sweep ore to discover that the same size Randall foil was suitable for both sweep and sculling blades. A significant contribution came from working with Australian Olympic medalist Dan Noonan and his students at Riverview in Sydney. Dan conducted a series of trials fine-tuning pitching and found that a three-degree pitch with pins set at zero improved the foil's performance by eliminating the surface turbulence which was evident with the four-degree pitch. The increased adoption by the rowing community recently caught the attention of one of Australia's most respected coaches. Over the past month, Tim McLaren, head coach of UTS Haberfield and guest coach of Cambridge University Boat Club, has been trialling my design, going over first principles and checking over every design assumption, from pitching to rigging to technique. My design caught Tim's attention because during the 90s, Tim had experimented with a number of designs inspired by the development in kayaking of the propeller blade design. It was also Tim McLaren who tested and sadly ended the Croker Sydney University experimental blade. He had some success with his own modifications to the end of the blade, which is now accommodated by the Vortex strip. He had also purposefully remodelled oars for key races. He was mainly concerned with testing the rounder foils for their high performance rowability and whether the current design was capable of being raced at high rate at top speed by elites. You will see that early prototypes were heavy. They used too much material and those who were conducting trials struggled to reach the peak rates. However, Tim McLaren trialled our current iteration, which was made of a lightweight engineering plastic. And they were tested with Australian representative level athletes in a coxless four. And Tim's trials were positively concluded and have Tim's confirmation that the current design can be raced at top level by top athletes who wish to utilise its design advantages. And now Tim McLaren said, your world-class athlete can perform with whatever they row with because they have a mental toughness that sets them apart. It will be interesting to see if they will consider exploring the Randall Foil design. And my wish is that they will. The feedback from the athletes who did the recent testing was consistent with what we've been re receiving from our first users. That the Randall Foils deliver a firm hold on the water, crisp catches, a more controlled and predictable drive and the feeling of a more powerful stroke with improved boat stability. Tim commented that what was unique about the Randall foil design is that it takes blade modification in a new direction. Tim pointed out the discovery may have only been possible because I'm a little overweight and the boat I was rowing at the time was too small, but especially because I'm an outsider. That I had not had to risk a hard-earned reputation within the rowing community to consider such a crazy design in the first place and to pursue its development. I continue to be motivated by positive user feedback and now tangible results at regattas. And I am seeing a growing grassroots adoption and positive reception. The science is currently lagging behind the rate of adoption with but many trials underway. The Randall design has now set new schoolboy records in the United States, has seen first users set personal best performances and is now winning surf boat and ocean races in Australia. I discovered the Randall Foil design during a sabbatical. I was able to devote time to daily sculling on the Nepean River, west of Sydney in Australia, and it was then that I reflected on my wet ore shaft. Surely, every time water comes in contact with my ore shaft, it is affecting my boat speed. My simple hypothesis was that if I could eliminate contact with the water and my ore shaft, I would row faster, however marginally. The ore shaft is a pure lever and when in contact with the water acts like dragging a pole through the water. And I called this ore shaft drag. The buried shaft serves only as a point of resistance against my efforts as the rower. 
and the challenge was to work out a way of limiting the depth of the ore so that only the blade was in contact with the water, thus eliminating ore shaft drag. It would require some kind of stopper, a float or a mechanical limiting device within the gate. My first trial was a 90 degree edge made from PVC moulding that you can purchase at a hardware store. The effect was immediate. I had no idea that it would be so profound. I was training with a heart rate monitor and found that for a steady state I was rowing 5 seconds per 500 metres faster. At 45 years old, I wish I could put my performance down to an improved technique or an improved fitness. I concluded that it was due to my design. And I had my design tested by fellow masters rowers with the same result. An instant speed increase of approximately 5%. Understandably, I've received a great deal of ridicule over my design. And I found myself having to defend my original hypothesis about my wet oil shaft slowing my boat. A visit to a web forum will testify to the wide range of views held in the rowing community. I was told that my design would not work because a rower needs to dig deep and grip the solid water down below the surface. I not only needed hard data that my design improved the claimed speed advantage, but that there was scientific validity behind my original hypothesis. In the face of ridicule, amateur evidence and sinking hypothesis, I was saved by Dr. Valery Kleshnev. I want to thank Dr. Kleshnev of BioRow for agreeing to conduct an efficacy trial of my design, but also for pointing me to a study he published in 2015. The Dr. Kleshnev has shown that contact between the ore shaft and water does have a negative effect on boat speed. And what I had called ore shaft drag had a term, the breaking splash. He states, an extra 6 degree of blade depth, or 48 centimetres of contact between the water and the ore shaft, increases drag resistance and decreases boat speed by 3.5%. That's 14 seconds in a 2 kilometre race. I concluded that was similar to my experience, and with my design I had effectively reduced blade depth to 0 degrees and eliminated braking splash and was seeing speeds similar to the 2015 study. The solution that contemporary ore manufacturers have reached is to produce skinnier shafts with stiffer materials. However, anyone who has dragged a stick through water has experienced how much resistance water has, even with a skinny stick. We seem to have all identified the problem, and my design simply offers a differing solution. Rather than accepting water contact and minimising ore thickness, my design demonstrates that we can eliminate all water and and or shaft contact. I sent an early, rather heavy, hand-cut PVC prototype to Dr. Kleshnev, who agreed to conduct an efficacy trial, a proof of concept. The prototype had not been perfected. It was rather crude and, as I've said, heavy. And the protocol was the following. That oars were pitched at three degrees, and the bio-road telemetry system was installed on two singles one with normal blades and the other with Randall foils attached to similar oars. Four junior scullers were tested in pairs side by side and then they swapped oars and repeated the test. The test was a thousand metres continuous pace with its target stroke rate 24 to 36 strokes a minute and stepping every 250 metres and then the last 100 metres at maximum. The rowers were talented junior development squad from Maidenhead Rowing Club, coached by Dr. Kleshnev. Due to the on-water conditions and the heavy weight of the prototypes, the feedback we had was the weight limited the performance at the high rate, and the boys could not perform effectively at 40 strokes a minute. And looking at the total time of the results sheet, the totals did not give the yes-no answer that I was looking for. So the totals included the speeding up through 20 strokes per minute and also the topping out at the 40 strokes a minute. However, we looked at the performance of the oars at the target rate of 24 to 36 strokes per minute as providing a window into the efficacy of the design. Between 24 and 36 strokes, we see positive data. The results show that there is an improvement in three main areas, the catch slip, blade efficiency and boat speed. With the catch slip, the average of 8.9 degrees with normal oars was down to 7 degrees with rounder foils. 
and that's an improvement of 27%. With blade efficiency, in comparison, the closest hydrodynamic element is the vortex strip. And the BioRow newsletter in August 2003 measured the blade efficiency of the strip, showing a 1.9% improvement. So having both a vortex strip and a Randall foil improves blade efficiency by 3%. And the third area was boat speed. The average speed increase over the test was 2%. That's 8 seconds over a 2K race. But when we looked at maximum speeds, we saw an improvement of 4.5%, which is 17.5 seconds in a 2K race. The corrective nature of the foil would enable the sharpening of technique for all users and not just elites. But elites would be able to sustain the peak speed performance gain that the Randall foil offers. The conclusions we reached by looking into the data was to further invest into the design and to seek partners in the design project. And we pressed ahead in developing the Randall foil and introduced a number of design changes. We had the design commercially manufactured and distributed now with Aram Lemina through aramtraining.com. Lightweight materials and significantly reduced the amount of materials so that our top performance rates could be achieved. And we did this through utilising an engineering plastic which is used in the mining industry. We determined that using vacuum injection moulding was inappropriate for a safe and durable product and there are many serious environmental aspects of using this common vacuum injection moulding process. We designed the Randall foil so that it could be accommodated to fit a number of different ores which are currently on the market, ensured that they can be attached. We've also learnt that raising the gates around two washers helps to accommodate the design, allowing hand heights to be the same as practised. Now users have no issues with reaching peak stroke rates and feel no extra weight presented by the Randall foil. A most recent development is in surf and open ocean rowing. The Randall foil provides the water tension that is lost in rowing through ocean foam or aerated water, especially as soon as the wave has passed. The Randall foil seems to give back the surface tension that is lost in aerated water. Why do we need to change the design of our oars? We need to improve the performance of our oars for safety and, and the design limitations. In the final of the Junior World Championship single skulls, we had a competitor, crab and capsize. Also in the semi-final of the World Championships, the current holder of the world's best time in a single skull buries an oar far too deeply, losing stability and momentum at a critical moment in the race. Now I teach my design students that a product must just work. And if there is an optimal depth for a blade, then how can we design an oar that just operates at that depth? If only the most elite rowers can achieve optimal oar depth, or blade placement, then we need to redesign the oar so that anyone wielding an oar can operate it most efficiently. It needs to just work. I'd like to thank the following people for their assistance in developing the Randall foil. I thank you for your time this morning and giving me the opportunity to present this design to the rowing community. Thank you.